Is he making it? What is his name? And the cold. Is it? Yeah. I'll grab a pretty solid. Hmm. Hello, can you hear us? Yep, no worries. Good. Good man. Right, um. Is it. Right, is, is everybody there? Is, we're struggling to see you. Is there just one of you there? Yeah, it's just myself today. Just yourself. Right, yeah. uh, well, um, one of the interesting things, the developments, shall we say, that's happened is that um, I've been told that I have to set you up a coursework in ANSYS. Now, uh, I've not done that yet, but I'm supposed to do it for next Friday, but that will be unlikely. Um, so, are you aware of you can get uh, answers to download for um, free? Yeah, I've got that on my laptop. Right, okay. Oh, there we are. Ah, well done. Um, yeah. Right, so you've got, you've got that. Have you got it up and running? I think so, but I'm not 100% on it. Um, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some materials, sort of learn off some... YouTube yeah. videos and stuff like that. Well, well, what I was going to say to you was, um, have, you, have you actually sent me an email uh, with your email address on it? Uh, not this week, but I can send you one when I get back to the office, yet. Yeah. That, would, that would be good, because um, it's so I know if there's anything to say to people, I can just kind of email everybody, yeah. and I yeah. don't have to put stuff up in, on Blackboard all the time. Yeah, um, and what I'll also do is I'll give you the, the email address for the other lad who's normally here as well. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Is that Tommy, is it? Yeah, that's is Tommy, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, so what I've done is on Blackboard, under AMEP, under Learning Resources Blackboard, AMEP, there's a directory called uh, FEA. Uh, okay? You can, uh, you can go to there if you want, while we're chatting, which is fine. Because this, this lecture is not going to be a long one, mate. Okay, no right. Are you, are you there? Yeah. Are you, right, okay, there's four documents in there. Uh, yeah, I actually looked right. through this this morning. All right, did you? Well, what I had a couple of quick glances. Yeah, no, 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 that, yeah, that's fine. Um, shows that you're paying attention, I'm impressed. Um, <laughs> so the last two documents on there, I would say... There's one, it's a presentation, that's of very limited use, I would say. All right, you right. could go through that in about two or three minutes. There's also, there's a PDF file that um, uh, tells you a bit about how to use ANSYS and Workbench. But I, I, I don't think that is, that is not that good. Okay? Right. And there's another two, there's one that says, uh, I think there's one that says... Uh, Workbench is the top one, and the, the second one's, or it might be Workbench Geometry. Is right, the top yeah. Aye. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and then one underneath it is work, uh, Simulation. Yeah. Is that right? Right. I, so yeah. I, think, I think these two these two files are quite good. I downloaded them from the web. Somebody else made them up. Now, I use these to get into ANSYS Workbench. Okay? So, yeah. um... You do the first one first, do the geometry one first, and that's building the geometry. And that's kind of like a self-contained exercise. And then the second one, simulation, is taking the geometry that you've built and applying mm -hmm. loads to it and, and things. Okay? Yeah. Now, there's one or two uh, errors in it, but uh, it'll still let you do what you need to do. I think there's a, uh, he's got, you rivet some parts together, and... Uh, I think he, he gets the coordinates of the rivets a bit wrong on one of the legs, I think. But it still, it still works. So, yeah. you know, uh, what I'm sort of saying to you is, how a bit go with... Uh, I think these uh, two uh, files are quite good. I mean, they're like word documents are about 39 pages, but it's all like pictures and things, you know? So yeah. I think they're quite good. I mean, if you could find something else that's better, then I'm okay with that, you know? But it's, I just I want you to be able to get into... You know, like start up the program, being able to do something before we actually have to go and do it. Yeah, I've also okay. got the, the MATLAB as well. 
Alright, set up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to talk how to use it as well. So. Excellent. You're better prepared than us. It's probably because <laughs> I've got more time on my hands. Oh, is that right? Oh, my, my head's bursting, I'm not joking. Um, so, today um, the lecture's a bit about uh, theories of failure, okay? Now, yeah. um, it's not going to be a very uh, long lecture. Now, on the on Blackboard, there's a, well, there's a, the presentation that I'm going to give uh, today, and in there there's examples, and the solutions to, the work to, to these examples are on Blackboard as well, in the Word document, okay? Yeah. So, we'll go through the lecture, have a bit go at the examples. They're not really that difficult. Um, you're going to need to do a bit, do you remember anything about more circle and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, so you're okay yeah. with that, because I could put up some uh, revision notes if you really want, or if you're okay with it, then fine. Could I, could I get that, please? Because I might be a yeah, bit yeah, rusty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you, no, you're fine, I'll do that. Um, and like I said, it's quite a short presentation. Um, we'll go through that, and then if you have any questions, either get in touch with uh, Alan Og or the, uh, you can VLE me or whatever. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that sounds right. perfect. Right, yeah. well, well, we'll just get on with it then. Yeah, okay. Nice well. okay. If you've got any problems with uh, Ansys, I don't know uh, who's your Ansys man up there, but you could get in touch with me down here if you want, or up in Thurso, whatever suits you. Okay? Yeah. No worries, that's perfect. Okay. Share. Right then, so here we are then. So we're on about... Um, Theories of failure. Uh, ductile materials, well, these usually fail due to shear stress on planes at 45 degrees to the, to the direction of the normal stress. I'm sure we all remember that from Moore circle. Don't we? Yeah. Ah, Alright, okay. Um, fine. So, uh, somebody's drawn a little cartoon here, which I don't really get, but anyway. Um, okay, so we've got... Uh, direct tensile stress, so the stress is force over area, and there's a guy pulling on a bit of material and going harder. Uh, okay. So, uh, if you increase uh, the load, then it will fail due to uh, shear stress on planes at 45 degrees to the direction of, uh, shall we say, the normal stress. Okay, that's all like more circle type stuff. And if you uh, stretch the material, then strain is delta L upon L. This is all school stuff. And then if we work the material, then work is force time distance. So the guy's getting a bit tired, he's a bit like me. Uh, so, because he's probably having to pull it about quite a lot. Right, when the specimen fails, all these changes reach their maximum values, uh, obviously. Uh, since all the parameters are at their maximum uh, at the same instant, tensile stress is easiest uh, to measure for uh, predicting failure. So, uh, here's a wee summary. Um, in a simple tensile test, there are stresses and energies which attain certain values at the elastic limit. Direct stress, direct strain, shear stress, and total strain energy. That's work. Uh, but, in the real world, any of these uh, cases could be the deciding factor in the cause of failure. Like, for example, with high cycle fatigue, your direct stress never ever gets near to the yield stress, ever. And it'll fail due to fluctuating stresses, um, which are much smaller than the yield stress. So that'll probably be uh, failed due to strain energy. Uh, for a, a component subject to complex loading, so in our cases that'll be... Uh, like biaxial stress, so you have sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. It's probable that direct stress, shear stress, direct strain, strain energy will not be at the same, will not be at the same time, will not be at the maximum at the same time. They'll reach these values because uh, that doesn't make any sense. For a component subject to complex loading, it is probable that direct stress, shear stress, direct strain, Strain energy will not be at the same time, won't occur at the same time, uh, and it won't reach the maximum values that are caused in a simple tensile failure. So, not much, that English is not very good. 
uh, oh, challenge. We've got the Americanisms coming in straight away. As I've said, unknown here myself. How can we relate the biaxial complex stress state and a component to a simple tensile test? Because tensile tests are easy to do. Okay, so uh, anyone off the top of their head going to tell me what, uh, what one's going to fail? No? Okay. <laughs> the one that's got uh, sigma x and sigma y equals 100, uh, that'll equal the yield strength. If it's 90, then it'll probably be less than the yield strength. And if it's got complex loading at the bottom of shear stress, uh, it will exceed the yield strength of 100. So you can verify these yourself on a more circle if you're really keen. It should take you about two minutes. Uh, okay, so failure theories are used in predicting yielding and ductile materials when they're subject to complex loading. Okay, so the failure theories are really, they really relate to um, sigma 1 and sigma 2, which are functions of sigma x and sigma y. Principal stresses are, well, like I said, you should have done this in MEP last year. I know that you should have done it because I'm doing it with MEP class just now. So that, that shouldn't be new to you. You should be okay with that. Uh, Okay, there's quite a few uh, theories to, uh, for failure. There's this, and here we're just looking at uh, shear stress theory, uh, also called the uh, Tresca, and shear strain energy uh, theory of failure, which is for Mises. There's a few more, but I can't, well, I could look up a sheet and tell you what they are. Um, there's other ones, there's the maximum principle stress theory, is the Rankin, and there's also uh, there's another one, um, uh, the Coulomb Mohr theory. Okay, so and there's there's different theories for different um, uh, types of materials and stuff as well. So it's not just limited to these two uh, theories of failure. Okay, so uh, theories are based on the principle that uh, whatever is responsible for failure in the standard tensile test will also be responsible for failure under conditions of static loading in a complex stress situation. So, um, here's the maximum shear stress theory by Tresca. Uh, failure is occurring in a tensile test because the material is unable to withstand the shear stress. Okay, so remember, it will fail due to, on planes of 45 degrees to the, uh, to the normal stress then the theory predicts that any component made out of the same material under any permutation of complex loading will fail only if the maximum shear stress exceeds 100 meganeans. Okay, so that's, that's what they've decided with this. So here we are. In a tensile test, the maximum shear stress is yield stress divided by 2. Uh, and time max is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 upon 2, so if we equate these two, then um, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is going to equal to the yield stress. And that's the criteria for it failing. And then if you put in a factor of safety, uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to the yield stress divided by the factor of safety n. Okay. So that's a fairly simple and easy uh, theory of failure to use. So you don't really have to think too much about that. It would just be a case of either uh, doing a more circle for your stress element or using the equations calculating sigma 1 and sigma 2 plugging it into there not difficult what I found uh, I would say with because um, I've had a look at the questions is that there, there's more problem I would say or more effort involved in determining what sigma 1 and sigma 2 is rather than applying the uh, failure theory so this is just a, a sort of an add on um, okay, so it's saying that uh, a point in the component is uh, a point in the component is thus considered safe as long as the maximum shear stress at that point is under half the yield stress strength, if you want, obtained in a standard tensile test. So here we are, and this is the failure envelope for maximum shear stress theory. Okay, so above, well, you can see on there, 
there's no yielding protected within the kind of the, the blue area. Right side of the blue area, it's going to fail. Okay. Uh, shear strain energy uh, theory of failure. Well, it's a bit more, um, a bit more involved. You can see that the shear strain energy here is sigma y, is the yield stress divided by six times the uh, modulus of rigidity. And then it's saying that the shear strain energy here is 1 over 6g sigma 1 plus sigma, sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 sigma 2. So again, if we equate the two, then you've got your uh, theory of failure at the bottom there. Sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared minus sigma 1 sigma 2 is equal to sigma y. And again, you can have a fact the safety on there. Okay, so everybody okay with that? And uh, this should be say von Mises, not von Mises. So the yielding will, will occur in the component when the distortion energy in a unit volume equals the distortion energy in a unit volume of a specimen uniaxially stressed to the yield stress in a tensile test. So these two theory, uh, theories, these two theories are based on uh, measurements that people are doing in tensile tests. So the failure theory is based on a tensile test. Okay, and here's the failure envelope uh, for the maximum strain energy theory. You can see the uh, von Mises, well, the, the maximum shear strain energy theory is more conservative than the von Mises. So if you want to be ultra, ultra safe, use the shear strain, uh, the, uh, the maximum shear stress, sorry, uh, theory when you're doing your uh, calculations. Okay, so it goes on to here to talk about uh, total elastic energy and the uh, energy stored through the change in volume plus the energy stored, the change in shape is the distorted shape. So there's the total elastic strain energy, which fine. And here's the, the shear related uh, failure criteria. So here's one that they've taken actually is based on some kind of data. You can see that again. The uh, maximum shear stress theory is more conservative than uh, the shear strain energy. Okay. And then it goes on to do, to do examples. Now, in example one, uh, I can tell you the answers for that because that's not on the, on the sheet on the blackboard. Now, these are unchecked answers because I did these last night and I was a bit tired. So, there's nothing to say that the answers for this are correct. So, uh, the maximum shear stress I got for, uh, okay, so the factor of safety I got from using the maximum shear stress was 1.23, and for the shear strain energy theory I got 1.426. As I'm saying, these are unchecked answers. I did them last night. Um, so they may not be correct. Uh, on the rest of the examples, well, uh, there's, there's a few, I think there's six. Uh, yeah, the answers for these are on Blackboard in a Word document. So what I'd like you to do is to work through them. Uh, you can check your answers with the Word document. If you've got any problems, either get in contact with me uh, or uh, up in Thursday, go and see the Alan Og. Um, so that, that's what we need to do, um, I'd like you to do for, say, next week, or whenever you can do it. So here's a wee summary then. So lots of people are doing um, experiments to, uh, to study the behaviour of materials and, uh, how, and test the validity of the foregoing uh, theories. Uh, and it says here um, that the hydrostatic pressure and hydrostatic tension do not cause yielding. Uh, complex stress systems can be regarded to be a combination of hydrostatic stress and a function of differences of principal stress. And therefore, a yield criterion such as that of Stresca or von Mises, which is based on principal stress differences, would probably be the best one to use. They've been well established for adult time materials, been around for donkey's years, I think this was done in the 20s or something, or 40s or something like that. 
And the, the maximum shear stress theory uh, is not quite as consistent. It gives a uh, fairly uh, reasonable prediction and sometimes it's used because it's more simpler than the mathematical um, strain energy um, formulation. And it's more conservative. So um, I don't really want to read all that out. I'm sure you can uh, uh, read that yourself. But what this is all about is von Mises stresses. Uh, it's about finding the principal stresses. That's what it's about when you're doing these uh, theories of failure. Okay? And that's just a repeat of the slide. I thought I'd taken that out, but I haven't. Right, so. Uh, stop sharing. So, how did, what did you. Uh, you kind of okay with that? Or? Yeah, that seems all right. No problems. Yeah, it's the the thing is, um, all the the questions that's on the presentation, you'll spend more effort finding out the principal stresses than what you will doing the calculations for the shear for the the theories of failure and the the, the factors of safety. So that's they're kind of like add-on bits if you see what I mean. I mean yeah. you're probably able to do the the complex stress analysis last year. So I don't, I don't think this should be too much of a, an effort for you. You just need to get kind of back into it. Yeah, I can see right. things, yeah. Yeah, tell me, is, uh, is Alan back in the, the college today? Uh, I couldn't uh, tell you, I haven't seen him yet. Because he, he kind of said that he was going down to Inverness and then he said, no, I'm going to VC in uh, on Thursday, so I'll be around from Wednesday at tea time or something. Last night. All right, okay. So I don't know if he's in today, though. I think he was saying he was in today. So if you're okay with that, um, you can have half an hour to do all these questions then before your lunch. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, so are you, how, how are you finding the course going? Are you, are you kind of doing all right with it? Yeah, it's, it's not problems. Uh, as I say, I'm just going through the examples and stuff like yeah. that and just yeah, working I mean, through them. Yeah, I mean, you've got to do it your own way. Different people have different ways of doing things. So, you know, like I said, if you've got any problems, you get in contact with me or Alan. Or have you had a bit go at the, some of the heat transfer stuff yet? Yeah, um, I was having a go at the, you know, the one for the extended fins. Yes. You know, that example yeah. of the aluminium pan. I'm just going through that at the moment. Okay. Going through all the yeah, other well, ones. Yeah, I'm you supposed to... Awesome. Uh, I'm, I meant to put up some tutorial questions, but um, I've just I've not had time for that. Um, I've just I've been over the head. And yeah. um, did, did you manage to get that book, that in computer and DWIT? Well, I've got it on order, so it should actually be arriving either today or tomorrow. I think I got right, it for okay. about fifteen quid off eBay. All right, okay. Well, a second-hand one or something. What? Yeah. Or a new one? Do you know what edition? Uh, a second-hand one. Yeah. Do you know what edition you're getting? Uh, I think it's edition three. All right, okay, that's good because I've got all the answers to the questions in addition to yeah. yeah. The thing with Amazon was they were about the same price, but I was right. waiting about two to three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I just went by it. Yeah, yeah no, I would definitely say if you're going to buy textbooks, um, is to try and buy them second hand because, like, the, the technology, the, you know, it's the same, and it was the same when I did it 30 years ago, is what it is now. It doesn't, you know, okay, you do things a bit different, but the theory behind it is the same. So yeah. why spend 80 quid on a book when it might tell you how to use it in Excel or something, when you can buy a book for 15 quid that you just do it on a, do it by hand, and then if you're any good, you could kind of just do it in Excel anyway, you know? That's it. Okay, so... Is there any reading list for this module? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, right. I'll keep you. All, I'll keep you all right with um, with books. Um, then computer and DeWitt one is good for the heat transfer. Yeah, I would say for this sort of stuff and probably um, the rest of the the mechanical type sums. Go for a book called uh, Mechanical Engineering Design by someone called Shigley. Yeah, I've got that book. But, well, you'll be fine then. Right, no again, yeah, again, you can pick them up for like 15 quid, 20 quid or something if they're second hand. You put them here. Yeah, 
Well, we, we, we've got them here. I think there's, right. uh, there's, there's three copies in our library of uh, the 8th edition and one copy of the 10th for reference. So, well, if, you, if you've got one, you'll be fine. So the, the chances are, um, if I'm going to do stuff or make up tutorials, I mean, there's a lot of tutorials that have been made up already, not by me. But if I'm going to make up a, a tutorial, the chances are it will come from Shibley. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. just, it just will. That's where it will come from. Because that's the book that I use. So, so uh, if you're okay with that, then we are, you can have an early lunch. Aye. Okay? So, nice to know, uh, Aye. So we'll see you next Thursday. Thursday. And uh, if you can send me your email address, that'll be great. I know it. I'll send you Tommy's as well. Yep, that's brilliant. I think I might as Tommy's uh, Tommy nineteen ninety four at hotmail dot com or something. Yeah, something in line to that. Yeah, well, so I've got Tommy's, but you can send it anyway, and it won't do anything. Uh, okay. I know it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. perfect. See you next week, then. Cheers. Okay, cheers, mate. Right.